The Reapers are a technologically sophisticated species of synthetic, organic starships. The Reapers live in deep space, which is enormous. They hibernate there for 50,000 years at a time, while we as fans are familiar with the Reaper subtypes, such as Sovereign, a capital ship subtype, and well-known enemy in the first Mass Effect, to Harbinger, the first ever Reaper to be created. However, even diehard fans of Mass Effect and Bioware may have missed on the finer details of how these enemies were even conceived. So here are five things Bioware never told you about Reapers. And just maybe by the end of this, you will become a diehard fan, I mean, indoctrinated by the Reapers. A false name. Although the name Reapers has become synonymous with these terrifying harbingers of cyclical destruction and mass extinction, that's not actually their true name, and their original title has never been truly uncovered, perhaps due to how many cultures have been destroyed over the course of countless millennia. These giant machines are ancient, so their true name is largely unknown. Reapers was a name bestowed by the Protheans, the previous galactic power 50,000 years before, and even during Shepard's time, the Geth primarily referred to them as the old machines. The Protheans coined the term Reaper to describe their most lethal opponent, and it served as a symbolic and entirely appropriate moniker for these gigantic killers. It would also be known first and the only time they were granted an official title, with mankind finally defeating the Reaper menace once and for all, despite the player's specific choices within the ending, of course. But within that, according to the Leviathan DLC from Mass Effect 3, before the Reapers came to be, the galaxy was under the thrall of a race known as Leviathans. They created intelligence to solve the problem of organics and synthetics killing each other. However, this intelligence turned on them, slaughtering most of their kind and processing others into their very first true Reaper, the Harbinger. So regardless, Reapers spare little concern for whatever labels other races choose to call them, and merely claim that they have neither beginning nor end. They state they are the Alpha and Omega. We are eternal, the pinnacle of evolution and existence. A Harvest's True Statistics By harvesting technologically advanced species, both organic and synthetic, and storing these old species within immortal reaper bodies, room is made for new life to flourish and grow, as was the case for primitive man. The continuity of life in the galaxy is assured through the cycle of extinction, as it ensures that organic life will never be fully exterminated before its time by synthetic life, as was demonstrated by the Quarians and even the Geth. But most of us who've played Mass Effect know it's truly a gruesome process. Reapers gather and process vast numbers of individuals from each of the galaxy's sentient, spacefaring races, and victims who cooperate with or are captured by Reaper husks are rounded up into camps, where the husks select individuals deemed fit for processing. It is believed that the husks use scent or chemical receptors to analyze the genetic composition of victims. Those who are deemed unsuitable are turned into to more husks. Individuals who are determined to be suitable for processing are loaded onto Reaper processors, where they are ushered into single-person pods. Like a slaughterhouse, the interior of the processor is designed to prevent any visual or auditory contact between individuals being processed. Once in the pods, Reaper's nanites dissolve the victims into a raw genetic paste for ease of transport. This paste will then be used in the construction of a newborn Reaper, with the victims' minds being preserved to form the Reaper's gestalt consciousness. So writer Chris Hepler estimated that the Reaper's harvesting rate on comparative numbers from livestock slaughterhouses' annual kill rate. He came up with a figure that 1.86 million people would need to be processed by about 4,000 ships per per day to arrive at around 2 billion out of 11 billion casualties by the end of the war, though a typo omission of reduced the number to slaughter ships to only 400. So in Mass Effect 3, 400 processors were sent to oversee the harvesting of Earth. These processors worked tirelessly to harvest nearly 2 million inhabitants per day, which means the entire process of cleansing Earth would have taken upwards to a decade. Not nearly enough time to repopulate, but perhaps long enough, which is even more terrible. Terrifying. Hence, while it is interesting to examine some numbers related to real-world statistics such as cattle, it really drives home the fact that the Reapers are good. I mean, horrifying in nature. And this is just one of the many examples of how the Reapers are a force to be reckoned with.
the Reaper sound. The Reaper sound for Mass Effect is iconic. However, I think it's finally time for you to know exactly where it came from. It's not what you're going to expect. According to the book 25 Years of Game Development from Bioware, it states, Bioware's audio teams take regular field trips with microphones and recording equipment to capture strange sounds for use in games. Early in Mass Effect's development, three designers, Michael Kent, Steve Sim, and Michael Peter, decided to drive out to Elk Island National Park, a protected forest area about half an hour an hour east of Edmonton, in search of unique clips. Once the trio reached the park, they set off to record anything remotely interesting. Kent promptly fixated on a garbage can, a metal bear-proof receptacle with a heavy lid that creaked horribly when it was opened. It was like ominous, spooky, tonal, and almost musical, he says. I decided to throw a mic into the garbage and I just recorded it moving. I didn't know what it was going to be till later. Once we got the sound back, we started playing around with it, pitching it down, and all that stuff. Then Casey Hudson heard it and proclaimed, that's the sound of the Reapers. A sound that, in some form or another, has been used in every mass Effect game ever since. So now you know that the sound of a garbage can is the feigned noise made by the Reapers. So keep that in mind the next time you play Mass Effect. The Reapers are literal trash. Andromeda and Deep Space for those who haven't finished Andromeda, you might want to skip this part of the list. However, if you're not one to care about the extra content from that game, there is something that involves how the Reapers triggered the Andromeda initiative. Many Mass Effect Andromeda players, or those who don't bother giving it a shot, may not have progressed far enough to unlock all the secrets of the story. If you finish all of Sam's memory array from your father's past, the last and final memory triggers the reasoning behind their initiative. In the sixth and final memory, Alec is shown speaking to a Castus Vicarian about Shepard's theory on the Reapers. They theorize that should the Reapers purge the Milky Way of advanced life, the Andromeda Initiative may be the only way for their species to survive. Alec then contacts the Benefactor. The two agree on the true reason for the Initiative must remain a secret. Fearing that the Milky Way galaxy would be completely overwhelmed and decimated by the Reaper threat, the Andromeda Initiative was designed to allow humanity a chance to escape and start a new life in another galaxy where the Reapers would not follow. It was an expedition based on on fear, not adventure. And the fourth and final encrypted log is unlocked, which states, the file Milky Way emergency contains files with disturbing messages from the Milky Way. From the time when the early events in Mass Effect 3 took place, the Reapers have attacked and the people of Andromeda Initiative might be the only survivors of the advanced Milky Way civilizations, including even a final goodbye from Liara. I remember you spoke about a plan to settle Andromeda. I don't know if your arcs made it out of the Milky Way, but the worst has happened here. I'm with Commander Shepard and a brave crew. We're trying to build a weapon to turn the tide, but I fear that the civilization you remember, the people of the Milky Way as you knew them, could be gone forever. You may be all that's left. I also estimated how rare it is for Reapers to find the Arcs within deep space, where they hide. And you can see how I did that in another video. And despite their ability to move to and from intergalactic space and their longevity, writer Mac Walters has confirmed that there are no Reapers in the Andromeda Galaxy. Of course, given Mac Walters left Bioware just this last year, we may still expect the Reapers to have a role within the next Mass Effect, or perhaps even the Jardin from Andromeda directly. Cthulhu Mythos and Star Trek. The idea of a terrifying and incomprehensible alien intelligence waiting in the depths of space is a feature of Lovecraftian horror. If any of you have read Call of Cthulhu, you'll recognize the parallel. Several fans are even struck by how heavily Mass Effect pulls from H.P. Lovecraft. The civilizational cycles, the universe is older than anyone can imagine, malevolent ancient beings from the stars, and the leviathans that reside beneath the sea. This resemblance is also highlighted by one one of the survey's team's recordings aboard the derelict Reaper, which speaks of how even dead gods can dream. The book cites in his house at Riley, dead Cthulhu waits dreaming. Another link between the Reapers and Lovecraft's work is his philosophy of cosmicism. Part of me wishes they had kept the Reapers kind of mysterious, but most fans praise the Leviathan DLC for staying faithful to the Lovecraftian themes. But was it possible to keep the Reapers as mysterious and strange within the Leviathan canon? Is the awe instilled of their followers by the Reapers and Leviathans simply indoctrination? Or is there anything more to it? These questions will only arise as a result of the reintroduction of the Mass 
Effect series, possibly the Leviathans will return and resurface once again. Another tie-in to Mass Effect was, of course, the themes of Star Trek, primarily drawing parallels to the Borg and the Reapers as a race of network AI who utilize a hive mind system and have to deal with the occasional dissenter. So it does come to mind that this is obvious they drew some lines of inspiration to the game, and Star Trek plus the Lovecraftian themes are only just the beginning of it. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Five things Bioware never told you about Reapers. What on this list did you never know? What is your favorite quote from the Reapers? Assuming direct control. Uh, sorry, one moment. The forces of the universe bend to me.